Arrest a moment in time for history's sake and draw out the turbulence and trials of the times in the process. Obeisance to the philosophy of photojournalism as different from street photography and plain celebrity work. This is the story of a human joy to replicate and preserve fleeting time, its warmth and nostalgia. The story of windows, windows that reach back and draw us closer to an age not distant enough from our own so as to feel unreal, yet almost unfathomable for the stalwarts among men that it spawned in a single generation. And perhaps above all, the story of a passion to chronicle the richness of those times, though unmindful perhaps of the treasure being accumulated in the process. Grandfather Jawaharlal Nehru's hand curled tenderly around Rajiv's neck. Gandhi and Jinnah at odds in animated discussion. Nehru and the frontier Gandhi strolling down a Shimla street. Just some nuggets of history captured by Kulwant Roy in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. The yellowing crates that Aditya Arya was gifted by family friend photojournalist Kulwant Roy in 1984 were an insight into a social fabric and a rare ringside commentary on history in the making. Opened, rescued and delighted in only 25 years later, Today, this treasure, whatever has been rescued of it, forms a heartwarming exhibition. Original large prints and silver bromide prints, ranging from 1940 to 1960. A sharing in texture, intense feeling, a visual encounter at every step of the way. Historically, what can be a better form of evidence than photographs. What I want to leave behind is visual chronicles of this country in a certain systematic proper way so that uh, this tradition can be carried on and by setting up this India Photo Archive Foundation we are looking into everything not only political history but family histories. I'm interested in family albums, personal pictures because 200 years from now these will be used as source material for studying the social aspects, the anthropological aspects, the, the cultural history of the country will be based and studied from these pictures. Here's mainstream life given the color of a mood. Political leaders and their off-the-cuff moments that make them real and approachable. making meetings that changed the course of history. Or like in this early 20th century image of the Kashmiri Gate in the capital where the hustle bustle of the ISPT now rages. Still images in sepia that turn into a measurement of time, a measurement of change, sociological, demographic and more.
It's about feeling the times, feeling the mood and mindset, the moment in history. The magic just pours on and on. Photographs are the ultimate evidence of something which happened. And uh, I'm not telling you what happened. Pictures are telling you what happened. So I can convert everybody into a historian. They can interpret for themselves and say, this is what I see in the picture. So it becomes very interesting for me as a photographer to look into something called visual histories of everything, especially this country, companies, people, communities, because these are visual documents which will be preserved for posterity. And as a photographer and as a, again, a historian, it's my duty to see to it that these are passed on to the next generation in the best possible way. On to efforts to document the community the British ruled over. The exercise in itself documents the social fabric of the times. See, when the British came to India, they also wanted to show to the world and tell their people what kind of uh, people we are uh, colonizing, what kind of uh, people we are ruling over. So a book called People of India was published. Each tribe, each community was photographed. Typically, like you would do to birds and animals. So they, and only 200 copies were published apparently. And uh, it's a very rare volume called People of India. So we've started picking up pictures of uh, uh, this is one of that. Um, it's an original albumin print which was pasted in the book. So now it says Rupram, who resides at Hapod in the Merit district, is like the subject of the preceding illustration. A Thagga, maybe Thug. Thagga was a community and what has been said of this tribe is applicable to him. He is 50 years of age and of average height. So descriptions were given behind each community. Um, now photographically these are very important documents. Mubarak Ali Khan like Haider Baksh is Kambo Sheikh and a Sunni Muslim. He is inhabitant of Merat. 59 years of age and of average. His title or appellation of Khan does not belong to this tribe. He had probably gained by a member of his family under Mohammedan Empire when Khan was the lowest order of created nobility. The supposed origin of this tribe has been explained already via wide 155 and the present subject calls for no particular remark. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, so this... I'm interested in pictures, these are some, this is an original print of 1800 of Kashmiri Gate, 1890s of Kashmiri Gate and today ISBT stands there. So you can imagine the importance of these pictures. These are historical documents. So, besides this, I'm interested in uh, looking at albums, albums which are from 1800 and 1900s, because they could be family stories, anything. I pick up any album because I feel visuals have a lot to say and they have to be preserved for posterity. It's the story of the birth and fledgling years of photojournalism in India. The legacy left behind by this man, 
Kulwant Roy. He turned the camera from a pre-independence tool of surveillance for the colonial state to a free India instrument to survey the establishment. Roy was a Royal Indian Air Force photographer, headstrong and patriotic. Just that against his British superiors got him thrown out of the force. He was with the Royal Air Force and he was thrown out of the Royal Air Force because basically he was a very hot-blooded man. He used to lose his temper at any, you know, at everything which was not right. And um, he used to give, tell us a joke about his days in a place called, um, either it was, it was Kohat, I think, and where he was posted. And uh, he said, he was an aerial photographer. And he said, the Indians were not allowed to use the swimming pool for the first six days of the week. And on Sunday, we were allowed to use the pool because Monday morning they used to change the water and only the white officers, the Britishers were allowed to use the pool for the next six days. So he took all the Indians, soldiers with him and uh, uh, they made a mess in the pool on uh, Sunday night. And so Monday morning when these people came and they found a lot of crap floating in the water, there was an inquiry and all these officers were called, the Indians were called and they were summarily dismissed. His art was the result of capturing the immediate moment, representing iconic personalities and events, complete with a flavor that make them real yet momentous. Roy's close access to Nehru and his family resulted in some rare jewels. The films were very slow. The loading process of the film was very slow. And people like Jinnah and Gandhi did not wait for anybody to take their photograph. You had, you had one opportunity to capture that image. That's it. You could not ask Gandhiji, Sir, please, Jara Dubara se khade ho jaiye, ek bar hathi la dije. He did not have time for these things. This was, the pre-independence was a time when people had to be captured the way things were evolving. You could not stage those events. Today you have time to stage an event and request a politician or a prime minister, Sir, please, ek bar dubara. You could not do it to Nehruji, you could not do it to Gandhiji, you could not do it to Jinnah. Few would believe now that Kulwant Roy, for all his genius, all the passion for his art and the treasures he gifted to posterity, died a poor man, disillusioned and broken in spirit, with only a baton that he held out for the inheritor to take up. Somehow he was a very dejected man as a photographer. Photographers never made money those days. I kept telling him, uh, things are improving, things will change, people take professions more seriously, but he never believed me. And when he left these things with me, he says, one day when you have time, do look at them. Uh, otherwise, he died a very dejected and a poor man. He did not have that kind of money or uh, nor did he get fame in his lifetime. Today people look at his pictures and say, wow, what fantastic work he did. But did he get that fame in his lifetime? No. It's only now, when we are opening his stuff and setting the record right, that he created these images. He's being recognized as a figure to reckon with. But somehow in India, photographers were never given that kind of... Uh, a pedestal, you know, they were never recognized as somebody who were contributing to the history or to the society in any way. The already huge treasure out for the world to steep itself in is still but the tip of the proverbial iceberg. The crates that Kulwant Roy left behind carried a trove that extend far deeper into the age to which they belong. It's a painstaking, patience-seeking, 
passion demanding process to rescue it all from the ravages of time. One of the rare pictures with a negative which is broken from 24-1-1950, Sardar Patel and others signing the Constitution of Republic of India. And this is probably the only negative remaining in this world today of this kind. That's a contact sheet. Negative has got spoiled, as you can see, but the contact sheet had been made. So we are lucky we have a picture because there are not too many pictures of this historic movement which survived today. I mean, this is history. With the mission of the India Photo Archive Foundation extending even deeper to identify, preserve and document such photographic legacies. Everything is being digitized on a very, very high-end machines and uh, backup copies are taken. Then originals are being preserved in polyester archival material. Uh, we've taken a precaution to set up a humidity control area. So because humidity is the biggest cause of humidity, dust, pollutants, chemicals can spoil your original material. So this place which we have set up, uh, we have taken certain safeguards uh, so that, you know, that's best we can do to preserve this. Uh, these are the negatives of uh, the Crown Prince of uh, Prince and Princess of Japan visiting Rajkart in the year 1960 and this is like the original note and uh, this is a negative of them driving in Connaught Place. And this is all Rajkart. And on to encouraging their use in education as well as institutional and cultural endeavors. Eventually to aid development of a platform for amateur and professional photography over the ages. These rich sepia toned images are also ambassadors of sorts, emblems and treasures of the nation. A limited edition of photographs of Mahatma Gandhi, the Gandhi collection was recently published by the India Photo Archive Foundation. One of the first few editions was an official gift to President Barack Obama when he came to India in November 2009. When this collection was discovered, I also met the Prime Minister, uh, I was called to meet uh, Dr. Singh and uh, because he also presented part of her pictures to Obama of Gandhiji because uh, Obama likes Gandhiji very much so he presented a special collection out of Kulwantroy collection to Obama. So they asked me Ki, what do you intend to do with this? I said we intend to set up a foundation and look after this. So then uh, through Ministry of Culture, we formed an MOU by which we are digitizing all these images so that these images can be made available to people who are researching and on uh, who want to do books. And so that's, that's what we're trying to do as far as this collection is concerned. Moved to the basement of Aditya Arya's residence cum office in Gurgaon, and you find a treasure trove of a different kind. A haven for photographers, a collection of some 110 cameras extending back over the last century, brought together over the last 30 years. The large old sage on the stool to the pen and watch camera that revolutionized how photos are and will be taken. And they tell a story themselves of the passion and evolution of photography, of a human desire to capture his present for the future. 
The Ansco series that dates back to the mid-19th century, a folding camera using 116mm film, and then advancing rapidly into newer refinements of clarity and ease of use. This is a century graphic camera from Kodak, and this is also one of the oldest cameras, studio cameras. So this is used primarily for studio work, and this is how it was And this was the lens shade and there was no shutter so the cap was used as a exposure controlling device and this is how it was tilted and the focusing was done through these and there, was a, there were bellows here and the film was fixed in this area. So there the film was fixed. This is for the viewing. And this is from, again, early century. Here's the Ansco 1A New York among the earliest roll film cameras. This is ANSCO number one folding. ANSCO camera made by ANSCO company. This is ANSCO number one A folding, New York. And this is how you open the camera. And uh, this is the shutter speeds. And these are the apertures and and this is the viewfinder for this if you wanted to take vertical pictures you had to compose the picture in this or for uh, horizontal pictures it's the most amazing viewfinder it moves if you see it moves to landscape and then you keep the camera like this and then take and they made a film called Ansco and uh, here is a roll uh, from 1948, April 1948 which came with this camera. Also part of this rich collection, the Graflex large format and medium format press cameras of the early 20th century. The rangefinder, the SLR and TLR camera in formats ranging from 35mm to 5 into 7s were a rage, especially for sports and car race photography, done with a cloth focal plane shutter. So this is one of the oldest single lens reflex. This is SLR camera, is single lens reflex. This is classic single lens reflex. Vertical and horizontal. You can shoot in both things. How? By just changing the the back so you could actually it had a revolving back this was the invention which was done by this company without taking the film out and uh, camera tilt karne ki jarurat nahi hai you could just remove the back and shoot it well, charge put so many times you could uh, shoot through this so clicking a photograph the way we know it today though with obviously lesser ease and far greater expense had taken off they say the most beautiful thing about a photograph is that the people in it don't change with time as much as they do in real. Extend that thought to photojournalism or news photography and you catch a quality of timelessness, objectivity and narrative. A topical and rapid 
spontaneity. Kulwant Roy's Treasures Recording History in the Making will be benchmarks on how India used to live. a social fabric and a rare ringside commentary on history in the making. Opened, rescued and delighted in only 25 years later, today this treasure, whatever has been rescued of it, forms a heartwarming exhibition. Original large prints and silver bromide prints ranging from 1940 to 1960. A sharing in texture, intense feeling, a visual encounter at every step of the way. This is the story of a human joy to replicate and preserve fleeting time, its warmth and nostalgia. The story of windows, windows that reach back and draw us closer to an age not distant enough Arrest a moment in time for history's sake and draw out the turbulence and trials of the times in the process. Obeisance to the philosophy of photojournalism as different from street photography and plain celebrity work. From our own so as to feel unreal yet almost unfathomable for the stalwarts among men that it spawned in a single generation. And perhaps above all, the story of a passion to chronicle the richness of those times, though unmindful perhaps of the treasure being accumulated in the process. Grandfather Jawaharlal Nehru's hand curled tenderly around Rajiv's neck. Gandhi and Jinnah at odds in animated discussion. Nehru and the frontier Gandhi strolling down a Shimla street. Just some nuggets of history captured by Kulwant Roy in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. The yellowing crates that Aditya Arya was gifted by family friend photojournalist Kulwant Roy in 1984 were an insight into